The ancient Aztecs were quite the mysterious group of people. Their civilization was great and powerful, but they also did some pretty mysterious and questionable things. Today I've compiled a list of some of the strangest aspects of Aztec culture to share with you today, so let's get to counting down the top 10 mysterious things the Aztecs did. At number 10, Human Sacrifice if you know anything about Aztec civilization, then you're probably familiar with their sacrificial practices. Human sacrifice was a huge part of Aztec culture, and there are a number of theories to explain why these rituals were so important and happened so frequently. It is believed that the Aztecs practiced human sacrifice as a way to repay their debts to the gods or as a display of political power. It really just depended on who was being sacrificed, which is honestly a little bit scary when you think about it. These rituals were a big deal to the community. It would involve a large gathering of people at the sacrificial temple. A priest would stand at the top of the temple with the person being sacrificed, and they would use a ceremonial knife to make an incision along the abdomen, reach inside, and pull out the person's heart while it was still beating. They would then place the heart in a bowl and then push the person down the temple stairs. What makes this more intense is the fact that those in attendance would also hurt themselves as part of an auto-sacrificial ritual. Imagining all of this happening at once is quite mysterious and a little scary if I'm being honest. At number 9, Capture. Usually in warfare, especially in ancient times, the goal was to eliminate your enemies, so to speak. You go out there and you get rid of the threat. For ancient civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans, the amount of kills that you had determined your success as a warrior, but things were different for the Aztecs because they didn't rate your skill as a warrior on how many kills you had, but rather how many captures. It is believed that the Aztecs didn't want to kill their enemies on the battlefield, and that doing so was actually very clumsy. Instead, they believed that capturing your enemy alive showed more skill on the battlefield. This is a very different practice than most other ancient civilizations because most of them were all about blood shed and gore. Now you might be wondering why they preferred to capture their enemies and not eliminate them on the battlefield, and that's because they needed more people for sacrifices, point blank period. They didn't want to use their own people, so they used as many outsiders as they could, and battlefields were the perfect place to find new sacrifices. So capturing their opponents was just a win-win for them. Now before I carry on with the rest of these mysterious facts, let me first take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and maybe even subscribe to the channel if this type of content is really up your alley and you would like to see more of this. At number 8, Psychological Warfare Other than their practices of capturing their enemy on the battlefield, the Aztecs also had other methods of taking down their opponents, and that was through psychological warfare. Within the Aztec army, there were different ranks called Jaguars and Eagles, and these warriors, when in battle, wore outfits to make them look like their namesakes, either Jaguars or Eagles. The eagles wore feathers and wore wooden helmets that made it look like the warrior's face was coming out of an eagle, and the jaguars wore the skin of a jaguar and wooden helmets that looked like the animal as well. While in battle, it is believed that these outfits were used for psychological warfare to confuse their enemy and frighten them away with these agile animalistic warriors. And if their outfits and agility weren't enough to scare them off, it is said that the other Aztec warriors would also bang on drums and make a lot of noise to scare off their opponents. At number 7, Insane Weapons The Aztecs were some bloodthirsty people, as you could imagine. I mean, unaliving people was part of their everyday practice, so you could imagine that they would have come up with some pretty brutal weapons to take down their enemies, right? Well, let me tell you about one gnarly weapon that the Aztecs called Hungry Wood because of how bloodthirsty this thing was. Because the Aztecs never developed metal tools, they had to improvise to make their deadly weapons, and they used what was available to them. To make the Hungry Wood weapon, they used a wooden plank, and they embedded shards of obsidian into it, and this thing was super sharp. Apparently, it was powerful enough to take someone's head off, and honestly, I wouldn't second guess that. According to a report from Spaniards who encountered the Aztecs, they once saw a warrior use this weapon to take the head off a horse in one blow. This was even tested in real life, and though it took more like three solid blows to achieve the same outcome, the fact that this ancient tool was powerful enough to do that says a lot about this civilization. And number six, different afterlife. In many different cultures, they have varying stories of what happens to you after you pass away. There seems to be a common theme of a quote unquote good place and a quote unquote bad place, but with the Aztecs, they were really doing something different with their stories of the afterlife, and it all depended on how you died. 
In Aztec beliefs, if you died as a warrior, then your soul would go on to somewhere that involved more war and you would battle there for four years before returning to the earth as a hummingbird. For women who died during childbirth, their afterlife involved them helping the sun prepare to rise and fall. For those who died of some kind of sickness, they went to an afterlife that had an abundance of food. And for those who simply died of old age, then they went through a trial and their souls had four years to pass through eight levels of challenges, some of which included climbing an obsidian mountain and passing through an area of beasts who eat human hearts. And if they made it to the ninth level, then they would finally find peace. Their afterlife was incredibly complex and did not sound at all restful. At number five, harsh truth. Life is hard. No one really tells you that when you're a kid. Well, at least not these days. Back during the reign of the Aztec civilization, kids were taught from day one that life was not going to be easy for them. From the moment a baby was born, they were told that life was pain, you know, so that they knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. In Aztec culture, as soon as a baby was born, the midwife would take the baby in their arms and tell them the truth about life. They would look the newborn in the eyes as part of their religious tradition and tell the child, quote, life is an affliction, end quote. To really make the point of how tough that kid's life is gonna be, the midwife also promised the child that they would quote, die a horrible and violent death, either in war or as human sacrifice, end quote. Sounds like quite the life. At number four, stretch the kids. We all know that over time we grow, right? It's just a fact of life. We start off as little babies and we grow into big adults and whatnot. Well, the Aztecs kind of knew this, but didn't quite understand the whole concept of growth. They knew that people grew, but they thought that it was a manual thing and that they had to stretch their kids by hand to make sure that they grew to be big and tall. And no, I'm not making this up. They actually stretched their kids. In their culture, Aztec parents would hold ceremonies called the stretching of people to make them grow. I know, catchy name, right? During this stretching ceremony, they would take the kid by the neck and just dangle them in the air, letting gravity do its thing. And then they would move on to pulling on their arms and legs to stretch them out a bit to make sure that every part grew evenly. I have no idea where this thought to stretch their kids came from, but I do know that Aztecs were obsessed with making sure that their kids grew tall. So I mean, if pulling a stretch Armstrong on little Timmy helped him grow an extra inch, then to each their own, I guess. At number three, discipline. This is probably one of the wildest forms of discipline I have ever heard of, and I would not recommend that you try this on your own kids because this is absolutely brutal, but then again, the Aztecs were some pretty brutal people, so it's only fitting that they start off at a young age. Aztec parents did not take any kind of lip from their kids. No one was misbehaving on their watch. Now, the disciplinary actions that the kids received varied depending on their age. If they were under the age of 11, then the naughty children would be poked with spines from a cactus, and if they were really bad, then they would be covered in those spines. But for kids over the age of 11, their punishments for being lazy or misbehaving were so much worse than being poked with cactus spines. Instead, they would hold their kid over burning chili peppers in a fireplace, making them breathe in the fumes. This was a very harsh punishment, but that was the life of an Aztec. Harsh from the get-go. At number two, mandatory dance party. Another pretty odd thing that the Aztecs did was they held mandatory late night dance parties. Yeah, they basically had raves that everyone had to attend. This all night dance party was essentially the only way that young Aztec boys and girls could socialize because apart from these social gatherings, they were separated at school. These dance parties gave them a chance to socialize and also learn about their culture as it gave the adults an opportunity to share stories with the youngest generation of Aztecs. They would spend the whole night learning about religion and philosophy through songs played at the dance party. And the young Aztecs would also learn to flirt with one another since it was their only opportunity to. I think that out of all of the weird facts about Aztec culture, this is actually pretty cool because I've never heard of a culture having mandatory dance parties before. That's actually pretty awesome. And finally at number one, skull racks. Now moving on from something groovy to something rather spooky, we have Aztec skull racks. If you were to visit large city centers and temples at the height of the Aztec civilization, then you would have been greeted by a rather scary sight. Racks upon racks of human skulls estimated to be as large as 200 feet long and 100 feet wide. These racks featured the skulls of thousands of sacrificial victims. 
These racks were there to honor the gods to whom these victims had been sacrificed, as well as to demonstrate the city's power. I'm sure that if you walked into a big city and saw thousands of skulls lined up like that, you would be a little afraid too, right? The Spanish conquistadors were certainly frightened the first time they set eyes on the skull racks, and they documented every frightening emotion, making sure that we all knew just how frightening the Aztecs really were. Now before I wrap things up for today, I want you guys to leave me a comment down below telling me which of these Aztec facts surprised you the most. They were all so bizarre, so let me know which one resonated with you down in the comments. Anyways, that's it for me. I've been your host, Biru. Until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and stay sweet, bumblebees. Bye!